All right, so chapter 13 here looks at uh, four different types of molecules, carboxylic acids, esters, and also amines and amides. So we're going to look at uh, carboxylic acids and esters here in the first part of the chapter. So these are um, two types of molecules, both of which contain a carbonyl group. So the carbonyl group is the C double bond O that you're seeing there. Um, and again, down here in these molecules, there and here. Um, so uh, the difference between a carboxylic acid and an ester, if you remember back from chapter 10 in your functional groups, is that a carboxylic acid has your C double bonded to O attached to an OH, so that OH there, whereas an ester has the C double bonded to O attached to an O with another carbon containing group on it. So we call that an alkoxy group or an OR group. You really don't need to know that term alkoxy, but you need to be able to um, distinguish between a carboxylic acid and an ester. So again, a carboxylic acid is C double bonded to O bonded to OH, and you'll see it look like that. Whereas an ester, it's going to be O and then some kind of R group. And that R group is going to be some other type of uh, carbon containing substituent attached to it, whether it's a methyl group, an ethyl group, a pentyl group, or something like that. All right, so in terms of naming these, let's start with naming a carboxylic acid. Um, so similar to what we've done in the past, to name a carboxylic acid, you're going to find the parent chain. Um, but the, the key here is the suffix. So a suffix for a carboxylic acid is going to end in oic acid. So basically, you're going to find the parent chain and then change the ending to oic acid. So in the example shown here, there's a six carbon, um, a six carbon long uh, carboxylic acid. So you would find that there's six carbons, and you would say, okay, that's hexane. But then you would identify because of this carboxylic acid group right there, you would be able to say, okay, not only is it hexane, but it's a carboxylic acid. You're going to drop the E and change it to oic acid, which gets us to the hexanoic acid. And then we're going to name and number the substituents just like we have with the other molecules. Now, one of the keys here, though, is that we are always going to put the carbonyl carbon, that is um, the carbon that's attached to the oxygen with the double bond, so this one right here, that is always going to be carbon number one. So your carbonyl carbon is always going to be carbon number one when we're, we're doing the numbering. So that's why in this case it would be 4,5-dimethylhexanoic acid because we would be numbering our carbons from right to left. Now, there are a couple carboxylic acids that you have to just memorize with their common names. So formic acid is a one carbon long, so this is going to be a one carbon, one carbon long um, carboxylic acid. So instead of saying methanoic acid, it's going to be referred to as formic acid. Um, a two carbon long one is actually one that we've seen before. You may have recognized it from seeing CH3COOH, right? That's um, acetic acid. And that's when we looked at back in chapter eight with buffers and we talked about it being a weak acid and so on and so forth. So this is looking at that again, but we refer to that as acetic acid and not ethanoic acid. So one carbon long is going to be formic acid. Two carbons are going to be acetic acid. And then if you have a carboxylic acid attached to a benzene ring or an aromatic ring like this, that one's going to be benzoic acid. All right, so formic acid, acetic acid, and benzoic acid are common names that you need to know for some carboxylic acids. All right, so let's practice naming a couple here. Um, 2-ethyl-5-5-dimethyl octanoic acid. Um, sounds like a long, crazy name, and it is, but it's really not that bad to draw. So we're going to start with our parent chain, octanoic acid. So octanoic acid tells us we have an 8-carbon-long carboxylic acid. So we can draw it as a skeletal structure like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... That eighth carbon, 
right there is going to be attached to a double bond to O and then also to an OH. So that part that I just drew at the end, and I'm going to circle here in blue, that is our carboxylic acid part. Um, so now that we have those eight carbons, we can number them, right? So number one is going to be there, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, and number eight. So those are our eight carbons for the carboxylic acid. So now what we can do is add our substituents. So we can add a, an ethyl group on carbon two. I'll draw it down this way, right? That's a CH2 and then a CH3. Um, CH2 being right there, and then a CH3 being out here. Um, and then 5,5-dimethyl, five, five that's going to be a methyl going this way, and another methyl going that way, right? And again, we could label those as um, two separate CH3 groups. So just um, so you can see it also drawn out in a complete structure, um, I'm going to go ahead and erase what I just put up there. Let's draw it out as a complete structure. Um, so in this case, eight carbons is going to be carbon, 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 five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The last one is going to be C double bonded to O, bonded to OH. Then on carbon two, we're going to add an ethyl group. So we're going to have a CH2 bonded to a CH3. And then on carbon five, so again, let's write our numbers in here. Carbon one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Um, so carbon two, we have a methyl. And on carbon five, we have a methyl there and a methyl down there. And then on all the other carbons now, we have to add our H's in to complete the structure because now we have the two ethyl, we have the five, five dimethyl, but remember all of our carbons need um, four bonds. So we have to go through and do this on all of the carbons to ensure that we have a complete structure. So that would be 2-ethyl-5,5-dimethyl-octanoic acid. All right, so now looking at the structure on the bottom, right, this one we're going to go backwards, like how do we name this one? Um, so the one thing I want to point out here is that we have uh, parentheses, and if you recall, I kind of told you anytime you have parentheses, let's make sure we draw out, like write out the parentheses in a more complete structure so we can see it. And you're always going to start outside of the parentheses whenever you draw it. So basically, I'm going to go ahead and take the stuff that's not in the parentheses and just rewrite it. So I'm going to write CH, CH2, CH, COOH. And then off of this CH, I have CH2, CH3. And then I have two CH3. CH2 groups. I have two of those attached to that CH3. So now that I have a more um, complete structure here, I can go through and name it. So again, we're going to find our parent chain. So again, we have to start with the carboxylic acid. So I'm going to put that in the parent chain and I'm going to find the longest chain. In this case, it's going to be um, so write our numbers in carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, carbon five, and carbon six. So that's going to be hexanoic acid. Hexanoic acid. And now we have our substituents that we have to name. Um, the substituents being uh, this one up here now. Right? Remember, anything that's not in our parent chain is a, substitu a substituent. So there, those are both ethyl groups. So we're going to have diethyl, and we just have to number them. And it's going to be 2 comma 4 diethyl 
hexanoic acid. All right, so again, that's numbering, um, always starting with your carboxylic acid, which is this part here. And again, in this case, it looks like a COOH, which is the same thing we saw in that example drawn out. So again, you should be able to recognize it um, both ways, both in a condensed structure and as a uh, more complete structure. Okay, so for uh, talking about an ester now, so an ester is going to be, again, whenever we have the carbonyl group and then we have this alkyl group attached to it, this carbon-containing substituent attached to the O. So in this case, an ester is always going to have the suffix 8, or more specifically O8, because if you read the first bullet point there, it says name the RCO group, which I'm going to refer to this as our parent chain. So in other words, the parent chain is going to be the carbonyl group, the C double bond O, including all carbons directly attached to it. So in other words, we can't go um, through the oxygen to count our parent chain, right? So we have to go from the carbon out to where the other carbons are. And then whatever is attached to the oxygen over here, that's going to be our substituent or what we're going to call an alkyl group. So the RCO group, which is our parent chain, we're basically going to pretend that's a carboxylic acid, and then we're going to change the ic acid part to it to 8. So again, carboxylic acids, most of them are going to end in oic acid, um, and then we're going to change the ending to 8. The only ones that don't end in oic acid are going to be your formic acid and your acetic acid, which are two of those ones you needed to memorize. Um, the one carbon long and the two carbon long uh, structures. All right, so for naming an ester, let's do a couple, let's do a practice here. So propyl propanoate. So propanoate is where we're going to start with because this is going to be our parent chain, right? So propanoate, propane tells us we have three carbons in our parent chain. So I'm going to draw this out up here is three carbon long parent chain, right? Skeletal structure. But propanoate tells us that there is an ester there. So that means that we're going to have a C double bonded to O bonded to an O. So in terms of our parent chain, we can number that carbon one, carbon two, carbon three. And then we have an ester. And then what is that um, substituent that's attached to the ester, well, that's where we have our propyl group coming in. So then our propyl group is also going to be three carbons. So it's going to be one, two, three. So that's going to be propyl propanoate. So I'm going to draw this again as a complete structure now down here. Um, again, starting with our parent chain of propanoate, we're going to go C double bonded to O, bonded to CH2, bonded to CH3. Okay, so that's going to be our parent chain, and that's going to be the ester portion right here. Right, so that's going to be the propanoate. Now, the propyl part is going to be what is attached directly to this oxygen, and that's where we're going to have a three-carbon long substituent, which is going to be CH2, CH2, CH3. Remember that our oxygens are always going to have um, two bonds. Carbons are going to have four. Uh, and that's going to be important in making sure you understand like how to draw the complete structure. Really, those oxygens will also have lone pairs. Remember, oxygens always have two bonds and two lone pairs, if we were to draw it that way. All right, so that's propyl propanoate drawn out a couple different ways for you. For this problem, um, we're supposed to name an ester. So the first thing I want to do for this is actually rewrite it a little bit. So this region right there is uh, where the ester linkage is. So I just want to show you that kind of in a different way. So here's going to be our CH3 and then three consecutive CH2 groups. Now where it says COO, that is C double bonded to O bonded to O 
which is then bonded to a CH2, CH2, CH3. So I wanted to write it out that way just so you could clearly see where that specific ester linkage is. So now whenever we go to name this molecule, um, the first thing we're going to do is find the parent chain. Now the parent chain has to include this carbonyl carbon. So that's the C double bonded to O that's there. So we're going to go ahead and kind of include that and let's include that ester linkage and what we can do is count how many carbons are in there. We have one, two, three, four, five carbons in there. So that's going to be pentane. Now for an ester, we're going to basically name it like we would a carboxylic acid, which would be pentanoic acid. Um, however, we're going to drop the ic acid and make it O8. So pentanoate. Now the other part that we have to do is name the substituent, which is this part here. That has three carbons, so that's going to be a propyl group. So the final name of this molecule would be propyl pentanoate. So that would be the name of that ester. All right, so looking at this last problem here, so this last problem, um, again, is an ester, which we can see right here with the C double bonded to O bonded to O. Um, on this side, we see a benzene ring. So the trick here is being able to identify the parent chain. So the parent chain is going to be kind of the carbonyl group and the carbons that are attached to it, which is the one over here. So if we look at that and say, okay, what is that group? Um, if you imagine that instead of C double bonded to O bonded to an O attached to more stuff, if you imagine this was a C double bonded to O bonded to an OH and we were naming this like a carboxylic acid, this would be benzoic acid. So I'm going to go ahead and actually write that, benzoic acid. And again, that would be if this was there was an H attached to this. But there's not. So instead of it being benzoic acid, we're going to change the ending where you drop the ic acid and we change it to an 8. So the parent chain for this one, come down here and write it nice and clean, benzoate. All right, so that's going to be the name for the parent chain. And then we have to name the alkyl group or the substituent that is attached to the oxygen which is going to be the part that we haven't named yet which is going to be right here. Um, so this is a CH2 then a CH3 so that group right there is the same thing as a CH2 CH3 which would be an ethyl group. So in terms of writing the final name for that we would call that ethyl benzoate, and that would be your final name.